And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. There were a lot of Palestinians. Well, th there were too many, let's put it that way, Muslim Americans celebrating on 9-11 in the United States. That's it, period. Without putting a specific number on it. But, the story did not suggest thousands were observed celebrating or that the reports of such a scene were true. They were true and it was a great deal celebrating. Other accounts from that time concluded the allegations were unfounded. Oh gosh. Kowaleski has arthrogyposis. Arthrogyposis. Hey, Kowaleski, I saw the celebrating with my own eyes. So, you know, cut the crap. Stop covering it up. A congenital condition that restricts joint movement. In his speech, Trump cited the 2001 story written by a nice reporter and went on, now the poor guy, you ought to see this guy. Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. With the hand, with the claw. <laughs> on Thursday, Trump posted a statement on his Twitter account <laughs> saying, that I have no idea who Kowaleski is. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he has no idea. Trouble is, he's still getting away with these things. It's like, I think they learned it all from Ronald Reagan when he used to say, I don't, well, I don't recall. They learned it <laughs> from Goebbels. Goebbels didn't recall either? Goebbels said, uh, telling the lie, make it a big lie, and people will believe you. So if, if I keep, uh, keep on saying yep. uh, over and over again that this crown has magical powers and whoever touches it will be like Rumpelstiltskin, or, uh, I mean, or uh, no, King Midas, and everything will turn to gold and everything, and I keep on saying it all slowly idiots and, will start believing it and if you die Rumpelstiltskin if you die yeah and the people of your generation die and this story was heard by younger people will that become legend? it will be carried on that's correct it will become a legend hey I it's thought heard. the Holy Grail was this golden chalice with gems around it yeah. because that's how Hollywood portrayed the Holy Grail you're telling me it was just a an ordinary cup well obviously uh, that's why Jesus and the Apostles had to get money from other people to support themselves well, I'm sure I'm because sure. they didn't have golden jobs. Well, I'm sure Jesus's cup was not ordinary looking like my, you know. like my thermos cup I'm sure it was nicer than this it had to be it was Jesus drinking out of it so come on come on the multitudes did not know Jesus was Jesus at that particular time oh so he, it might have been an ordinary cup he even told his followers and etc when he healed people and told the people heal, don't say anything about this. Yeah. And don't tell anyone I am the Christ, the Messiah. Could you imagine how he would freak out today, worried about somebody putting, filming his, uh, his visits and putting it on YouTube and worried about it going viral? Like if Jesus was here today. Well, Oh, no, 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 no videos, no videos. Oh, please, don't put it on YouTube. Because you know why? Because it would have hurried his death. And it would have also um, uh, brought about the personality cult. See? Well, well, kings at that Rather time... Rather than his work. The royal family, the, the, the biggest welfare cheats who ever lived, the royal family, except for the Republican Congress, the royal family, they were very paranoid about uh, losing their position of power. Is that correct? 
anybody who's rich. Very paranoid. Well, the rich, the rich freak out if their daughter is dating like a poor guy, if their rich little girl is dating a poor guy. And, and you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, they would freak out because they would say, "He's after our money. He's after our money." There's that. Uh, there's that uh, uh, racist sheriff down south, whose daughter is bl dating a black guy. Apio. No, down south, not Arizona. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. so he's like really freaking out. Yeah. I mean, he's not the only one, of course, down there. Maybe it's like Mandingo when the, when the white, when the white female slave owner used to grab the, used to test out the black guys by grabbing them by the crotch before she purchased uh, the male slave. That's true. The Bible did not does not like that. Oh, you mean the mixing of the races? No, the grabbing of the balls by the woman. How the hell, how the hell do you know the Bible don't like the girl grabbing a schlong? Ah, uh, jeez. I read the Bible about 150 times. Well, how do people end up uh, copulating if nobody grabs anybody? Not that woman. A woman, you know, in battle or things of that nature. Not a lover. A lover can grab your balls. Okay. Jeez. Well, uh, it sounds and like... And your stick. It sounds like they were grabbing the, uh, the black man's... Um, to be sold as a slave. They were grabbing his, his genitalia sack. because they also... Part of his duty as a slave Ooh. is probably uh, being a sex toy for her. Or to breed so that the Massa don't have to buy slaves anymore. He can have his own. So he would allow... Grow on his own ground. He would want his own wife to get pregnant by one of the slaves? No, breed to I'm other I'm not black talking women. about the male having sex with the female. I'm talking about the movie Mandingo where the white woman yeah, yeah, was yeah, testing yeah, but, but, the schlong. But that's not why the guy buys a breeding slave. Oh, you mean they, they separated yeah. the breeding slave? For, oh, yeah, they did do that. Uh, they did, no uh, kidding. Select, they did select a breeding. Yeah. And Jimmy the Greek Snyder was right. Yeah. It's just that they wanted was, hard workers, man. You know, it's just hard workers. It's just that you couldn't say that in American media at the time. You can't well, say I'm it sure now. You could it, say it, but he said it wrongly. I know. He said yeah. that the big. They took the big black mama and the big black man, and they put them together to make strong yeah. kids. Yeah. At the, the way he. The way yeah, he, he said it. it. Yeah. He didn't put it in a scientific way. Thank you. I read that Governor Christie told Secretary of State John Kerry to shut up. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> he told Secretary of, State jo Secretary of State to shut up? He also accused President Obama of living in a fantasy land. Oh, gee, the guy that was that came around and 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 helped him out after uh, a storm, Sandy. You know, we're stronger than the storm. Oh, he forgot about that. How? What did Kerry say after oh, he was know. told to shut up by the the balloon? I don't know yet. The balloon boy. Okay. This raised my level of concern about the electorate in the United States. The voting public seems to embrace, rather than reject, the urban street language used by presidential candidates when they attack their opponents. Well, I wouldn't call it urban street language to tell somebody to shut up. I would just say it's, uh, it's uh, inappropriate for a man, political man, uh, in the, you know, in the spotlight like that to do it. Yeah. There is no defining event that one can point to and say, this is when candidates' personal attacks cross the line of decency. It's insidious. Yeah, it's like saying, 
Only my opinion counts, so keep quiet and listen to me. The change happens unnoticed over time. Yeah. In 1988, during the vice presidential candidate's debate, Dan Quayle <laughs> compared himself Potato. to former President John F. Kennedy. Oh, that's because he his haircut it was similar. Yeah, but wasn't didn't they didn't they make a big deal about him spelling potato or tomato? That's correct. It was so stupid. It took up so much media time. Lloyd Benson countered by saying that he knew Jack Kennedy and speaking directly to Dan Quayle, he said, "You're no Jack Kennedy." I remember that. He didn't say to Quayle that he was living in a fantasy land or to shut up. He yeah, used yeah. the language wow. of respected political leader. Well, Chris Christie has sort of a thug-like demeanor about him. Hey, what do you got? Shut up! Listen to me, I'm the dictator of, uh, the, of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's disturbing that Donald Trump and Christie are letting the street language genie out of the bottle. But they are very similar when you think about it in personality, in poisonality. Except Donald Trump has better skin on the face than Christie. Donald Trump, uh, yes, yes. And he ain't got great skin, but you know. Okay. You mean Christie has like pop marks? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He must have had acme, acme when he was young. It's more disturbing that the American voter accepts this abusive rhetoric as commonplace. Well, it's entertaining for the general public in the media, you know, it's like... As this trend continues, after all, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. The new normal will be that a candidate has to be unpresidential to get elected president. Well, we're living in a bizarre world. <laughs> what's up? What's up is down. What's right is left. What's what's uh, insane is normal. It's um, it's just totally out of control, man. It's just <laughs> totally out of control. Our world, you know, and. Um, I don't know. I don't know. People are just not using common sense. You don't even have to be brilliant. You just use... There's a lack of common sense. Around. Use That's good sure. common sense, man. You know, like if you... When you read um, yeah, uh, in the Bible, Proverbs, in the Old Testament, there was a lot of things blurted out there that were common sense. Common sense. You know what I mean? Not Look, you could be a person who has like photographic memory and who can memorize the Encyclopedia Britannica or the, what is that, the Library of Congress or something, whatever. You can memorize anything you want. But if you don't have common sense, you can be just you're the biggest asshole that has a high IQ. You know, big deal, you know. But anyway, um, um, Oh, I hear the, the company Tesla has a battery for uh, homes that will allow people to live off the grid. You know, Yay. every week that goes by, I am just amazed at science, man. It just is it, it's advancing at such a rapid rate. Well, I mean, it's incredible. Now they have a virtual reality binocular. Uh, a, 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 a Galaxy, a Samsung Galaxy. You, you, Hey, the kids, if you thought the kids were in another world as it is now, now they, will be. they will be in another world. You won't be able to contact them. With virtual reality. You know, you feel like you're in a, like a three-dimensional hologram world, a cartoon, like a, like a video game. You, you'll feel like you're in <coughs> another world. It's not good. At least when I was... Well, I like the hologram on the Star Trek generation. The holodeck. The holodeck, yeah. No, I don't have a problem with high technology, but I have a problem with uh, 
putting the flora and the fauna and mother nature and all that meaningful stuff life itself on the back burner like like me and me and my friends all of them even dr bill we used to play outside we used to be outside you know and 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 yes we had very simple um by today's standards very boring toys mm -hmm. but we were outside doing stuff mm -hmm. we were we knew about about nature we had aquariums we had we went fishing i had my you know like i said many times before I had my tricycle then i had training wheels on my first bike i was down at the park we played sports we we you know we did stuff mm -hmm. you know i mean uh Today the kids are all shut-ins with uh, with their uh, uh, I guess their tablets now. We're all heading to be job of the huts. Lay around and press buttons. Be you mean the, is that why the kids are becoming more obese? As the years fly by, they're the yeah, obese they're couch they potatoes. Right. So it's going to be like the Star Trek episode where the where the alien species was pure intellect, pure oh, pure thought waves. That could be too, yeah. The little mushrooms. <laughs> telekinesis. Everything was tele telekinesis. Anyway, we're going to break for lunch. Yeah. We'll see you. I'm going to have leftovers, baby. We'll see you in the in the following video. When this video ends, you're going to see the next part. Of course, before you see the next part, you'll see our voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrow III, doing promo. Yeah. All right, we'll see you. Don't forget, man, look for that other part. This has been a Mega Life 21 production. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com Hi, I'm William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye.